Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionist. Welcome back to my chemistry quick review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about atoms, elements, compounds, the periodic table, periodic trends, quantum numbers, equations, and stoichiometry, solutions, solubility, molarity versus molality. As for today, we shall turn our attention to acids and bases. What is an acid? Well, we have three definitions and the same thing goes for bases. And just like we have pH, we also have a pOH. What does pH stand for? No one knows. Probably it is power of hydrogen or potentia hydrogena. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this chemistry quick review playlist in order. So what's an acid? We have three definitions. It's any substance that yields protons when dissolved in water. A better definition is, well, since the protons will go to the water, H plus H2O will give me H3O+. Plus. This is called a proton, this is called a hydronium. So an acid is a substance that releases proton or hydronium ion in water. What else? An acid is a proton donor. Thank you. And it's also an electron pair acceptor. I donate the positive and accept the negative. The first definition is called Arrhenius definition, which means an acid is a substance that yields protons or hydroniums when dissolved in water. And if I give you just one proton, I'm called monoprotic acid. How about two protons? Diprotic. How about three? Triprotic. If I am a donor, if I donate protons, that's a brownsted lowry acid. If I am an electron pair acceptor, remember acceptor is lowest acid. If I want to denote hydrogen ion concentration, I will put hydrogen inside these kind of brackets. These are called square brackets. The higher the number, the greater the concentration of hydrogen ions and the more acidic the solution. Definition of strong acids. They are acids that fully dissociate in water into protons or hydrogen hydronium ions. How about weak acid? Yeah, they dissociate, but not fully. And usually the arrow will be uh, going both ways. I go this, I also go this. But strong acid, only one way, full dissociation. Let me tell you something. There is an inverse correlation between the pH and the hydrogen ion concentration. What do I mean by this? Imagine that my solution is getting more acidic. More acidic means higher H concentration but lower pH. Next, a base also has three definitions. A substance that yields hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. A base is a proton acceptor. A base is also an electron pair donor, but the electron pair acceptor is the lowest acid. So the first definition is the Arrhenius definition. The problem with the Arrhenius definition is that it cannot explain bases like ammonia or sodium carbonate. Why? Because ammonia cannot give you hydroxide ion in water. Yet ammonia is still a base. Oh, so Arrhenius, you are a doofus. You could not explain ammonia. But look at Brownstead and Lowry. A base is a proton acceptor. Look at this lovely ammonia. It can accept this proton. So it's a base. Or look at Lewis. A Lewis base is an electron pair donor. Look at this pair of electron. I will donate them to H and I will make a bond like this. Do you remember your organic chemistry and the electrophile versus nucleophile? Same concept. Stay tuned for my upcoming organic chemistry playlist. Hydroxyl ion concentration, well, the higher the number, the greater the concentration of hydroxide and the more alkaline or basic the solution is. And just like the concentration of hydrogen ions was inversely related to the pH, similarly, the concentration of hydroxide ions is inversely related to pOH. And never forget that pH plus eOH always equal 14 for the same solution. The famous neutralization reaction goes like this. Acid plus base, they neutralize each other, giving me salt and water. Example, here's an acid, hydrochloric acid. Here's a base, sodium hydroxide. They will give me salt and water. Where the flip is the neutralization? Look at this. Here's acid, base, boom, neutral. Low pH, high pH, boom, neutral. Why did we invent the pH? Well, because if you leave it to the hydrogen ion concentration, it will give you a minuscule number. 
infinitesimally small, which makes calculations so difficult. So why not give me the negative logarithm of H concentration? And this will be my pH. So if the hydrogen ion concentration is 1 times 10 raised to the negative 7th power, oh, look at this small number, the pH is simply 7. If you want to make it easy on yourself, just capture this exponent without the negative sign. So what if I told you if the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution is 1 multiplied by 10 raised to the negative 8th power? What's the pH? Just grab this number. The pH equals 8. So the pH of this lovely solution equals 7 and the pH of this lovely solution equals 8. You know, this solution whose pH is 7 is 10 times more acidic than this solution. But the difference is just one. Dude, don't forget the power. It's the exponent. And a solution whose pH is 6 is 100 times more acidic than 8. By 100 times more acidic, I mean the concentration of hydrogen ions here is 100 times there. The same thing applies for the Richter scale for earthquakes. If I have an earthquake which has 7 on a scale and the other one was measured 8 on a scale, the earthquake that is 8 is 10 times stronger than the earthquake that is 7. Because this Richter scale also deals with exponent. Got it? Okay. Here is my hydrogen ion concentration and here is the pH because the pH is the negative log of H. Which means the higher the hydrogen ion concentration, the lower the pH and vice versa. The lower my hydrogen ion concentration, the higher the pH. And that's what I mean by inversely correlated. So if I have a pH of 1 and a pH of 2, which one is more acidic? The 1 is more acidic. What if I have hydrogen ion concentration of 10 times 7? And another hydrogen ion concentration of 10 times 5. Which one is more acidic? The negative 5 is. Your normal blood pH is about 7.4. Slightly alkaline. Why is this? Why not neutral since most of my body is made of water which has a pH of 7? Because in your blood you have something called the alkaline reserve which is made of... Who else but bicarbonate? Why do I have an alkaline reserve but not an acidic reserve? That's a wonderful question because your metabolism secretes acids, not bases. So you need to counteract the acidity. You need to buffer the acidity with your alkaline reservoir. I don't believe you. Look at metabolism of carbohydrates. Oh, that's an acid. Why is carbon dioxide an acid? Because before you know it, carbon dioxide will react with water and will give me H2CO3, whose name is carbonic acid. Say it again because it was so beautiful. Carbonic acid. Oh, that's an acid. Okay, metabolism of fat. Acid. Metabolism of proteins. Not just acid, but acid, 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 acid. Especially with animal proteins. In fact, one way to distinguish between a vegan and a meat eater is to look at the pH of their urine. On average, the person who eats meat has a lower urine pH because of all of the acids. Look at the metabolism. If you remember my video on the Krebs cycle in my biochemistry playlist, I've told you that we have carbon dioxide coming out. Carbon dioxide plus water equals carbonic acid. The electron transport chain, also discussed in my biochemistry playlist, does not release carbon dioxide, but it releases water. So the moral of the story is, metabolism secretes carbon dioxide, thank you TCA cycle, and water, thank you electron transport chain, Lump them together, you get carbonic acid, which is an acid. If you want to know how Le Chatelier's principle is applied to this equation and how this is important for a doctor to understand, please refer to my acid base course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. The pH scale. Remember, there is an inverse correlation between pH and hydrogen ion concentration. So, the lower the pH, the more acidic the solution. And vice versa, the higher the pH, the more basic the solution. Something that is super acidic 
battery acid. Extremely dangerous, followed by gastric acid in your stomach, lemon juice, wine, vinegar, bananas, black coffee, milk. Pure distilled water is neutral, meaning the pH is 7. And then let's go to the basic stuff, blood, sea water. Yeah, your blood is 7.4, slightly alkaline. Egg white, baking soda, household bleach, household ammonia, hair remover, oven cleaner, drain cleaner, super duper basic. Notice that household cleaners are usually basic. What's an amphoteric? An amphoteric is like an amphibian. I can live on land, I can live in sea. So an amphoteric is something that can act as an acid by giving us protons and can act as a base by giving us hydroxide ions. Let's answer the question of the previous video. Is bromine molecule more soluble in water or benzene? Well, can you answer this yourself? Let's talk about it. So here is bromine molecule, which means Br, Br. It's a diatomic element, so we can write it Br2. Okie dokie, and to achieve the octet rule, here is one, here is two electrons, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing here. One, two is in the bond, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if I try to cut this molecule with a knife, pew, like this, I created a mirror image. The left side is exactly the same as the right side, meaning there is no tilt, there are no poles, there is no positive pole versus negative pole, i.e. if there are no poles, it is non-polar, which means not soluble in water, but will be soluble in non-polar solvents, like benzene, because like dissolves like. Polar will be soluble in polar, like water, non-polar will be soluble in non-polar, like benzene. Some acid base equations. pH is inversely related to hydronium ion concentration. pOH is inversely related to hydroxide ion concentration. pH equals negative log H3O plus and pOH is the negative log of AOH minus. pH plus pOH always equal 14. And then I can reverse this. Oh, how? The concentration of hydronium ion equals my base is 10 raised to the negative pH exponent. And you can do the same thing for pOH. If you multiply concentration by concentration, you get molarity times molarity, or m squared. If I write them like this, it is 14. But if I write them as concentration, this is 10 to the negative seventh power, and this is 10 to the negative seventh power. Multiply them together, you add the powers, you add the exponent. Negative 7 plus negative 7 equals negative 14. And this is called the KW. There you go. Can you answer these questions? You have a solution of hydrochloric acid whose molarity is 0 0.025. Can you give me the concentration of hydronium ions, the concentration of hydroxide ions, the pH and the pOH, please pause. Let's try to solve this together. First, HCl is a strong acid, which means the arrow only goes one way. It fully dissociates into hydronium ion. So if you give me one mole of HCl, it's as if you gave me one mole of hydronium because of the full dissociation. Got you. Because HCl is a strong acid. Okay. How much HCl did you give me? What was the molarity? 0 0.025. And because of the full dissociation, we can assume that this same molarity applies to hydronium ion. So now I have the first answer ready for you. The concentration of hydronium ion is 0 0.025 uppercase M, which means molarity, which means moles per liter. Okay, if you know the hydronium ion concentration, can you give me the pH? Absolutely. The pH equals the negative logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration, which equals the negative logarithm of 0 0.025, which equals 1.60. If you know the pH, can you guess the pOH? Yeah, sure. Since pH plus pOH always equal 14, then pOH equals 14 minus the pH, which is 14 minus 1.60 equals 12.4. pH and pOH do not have any measuring units. Next, if I have pOH, can you give me the hydroxide ion concentration? Sure. 10 is my base raised to the negative pOH. So 10 raised to the negative 12.4 
equals 3.98 times 10 raised to the power of negative 13. There is another way of answering the concentration of OH, which is H3O plus multiplied by OH minus, these are concentrations, equals this. And since I know the concentration of hydronium from this step right here, I can do the math and give you the concentration of hydroxide ion, which will be very close to this number. Concentration of ions is measured in moles per liters or uppercase M, molarity. But pH and pOH do not have any measuring units. Can you answer this question? Which of the following cannot act as a Lewis base? Let me know your answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video where we talk about kinetics, reaction rates, the K constant, and Le Chatelier's principle. Here's another question for you. In this reaction, what's the lowest acid and who is the lowest base? If my videos are helping you, please consider buying me a coffee so that I can continue to make videos for you in the future. Download my chemistry PDF notes, my biology notes, biochemistry notes, physiology notes, all available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 1,500 free videos on this channel, plus 300 premium videos when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my notes, courses, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.